Next week is the mid-season finale, and this episode was explosive. Let's talk about the Oval. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy, Kenny. Now, remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all the information that I have in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And this is The Oval Season 1, Episode 11, and the name of this episode is The United Front. This episode was really fucking good and the ending blew me the f blew me away literally. <laughs> so, let's begin here. The episode um you know starts with um Yuma and Denise. Remember Yuma is taking Denise um home after that whole um situation that happened at the White House. And Denise with her whole ass is literally flirting with Yuma and She's still pushing up on her, but Yuma is still being focused, and she's not trying to cross that line. And and she pretty much t um, asks, um, Denise asks um, Yuma, do you find me attractive? And she says, no, ma'am. And she says, look at my face and tell me that. And she looked at her and was like, I don't find you attractive, ma'am. And she's like, mm-hmm, yeah, whatever. <clears throat> I know you lying. And I was like, Denise was doing the most. I'm like, bitch, this is Secret Service and you're screwing the president. Do you think that this shit is going to is gonna um, pan out well? You know, after the president done gave you a hookup on getting you some stock to make you rich. And now you messing with one of the Secret Service women. Like, <laughs> you keep it up. He going to be grabbing you by your hair and dragging you up the stairs. Hunting for the bullshit, but Denise is just D Denise is a whore, so she's just still throwing herself at her. And then she, um, when she had finally pulled up to Denise's store, Denise reveals that she had her wallet, that she had left her wallet on the chair, and she got a wallet. And she says, "Now, if you're gonna talk about, you know, you're married, then why is it that I don't see pictures of you and your husband?" But I see pictures of you and your wife. And she's like, so are you out? And Yuma said, yeah, out and proud. She's like, so why did you lie to me? You was like, because this is very unprofessional. And I'm not crossing the lines. And then all of a sudden, when she gets out of the car, she tells her, like, okay, come and get it. And then before she walked in, before she's about to go into the store, Yuma was like, um, my wallet, ma'am? And then she um, gives her her wallet. And then all of a sudden, you know, she goes into the store and she's like, I'll be waiting for you. So Denise goes in there and was like, girl, get your ass in here. You know you want to. Yuma kind of questioned it, though, because Denise is pretty. She's pretty, but she's poison, <laughs> you know. And Yuma eventually pulled off. But at that moment, Yuma was kind of thinking, hmm, she is fine as hell. But, yeah, you don't want to mess with that. Don't mess with that, Yuma. You know, she bad news. You know, leave her crazy ass alone. So then um, we get a scene. Richard returns home. You know, he has, um, and pretty much he before he even goes in the house, he, he looks at Barry's car and sees the bullet hole. He goes in there um, with Nancy. Nancy and Richard go back and forth, and Nancy is just not here for the shit. And then she's like, uh, she tells him about the girl on the sofa, you know, from the Rackadooshies. Um, and she, and, um, he asks about Barry, and she tells him that Barry's asleep, and then he wants his spare keys. And then, all of a sudden, she's like, I gotta go, I gotta make another run. Oh, that sent Nancy the hell off, and I was like, Nancy, you doing too much! But then again, she's like, you just, you've been gone pretty much all night. It's almost dawn, and yet you're about to leave the house again? You need to tell me what the hell is going on. Tell me, tell me. And he shows her the flyer with Barry's car in it, you know, because they're looking for the car. And she's like, we need to go to the police. 
And he's like, no, we don't. Like, we, we need to get rid of the... Like, she's like, no, we can't do this. You know, we need to do the right thing. We need to go to the police and explain what happened. And... And and then and then like he and then um Richard was like come on you know it was just a mistake you know Barry didn't mean to do it and then and then she's like but we can't we can't keep doing this this crap we need to go to the police and Richard says well then I'll tell him I did it and she's like excuse me you just said Barry did it she's like yeah but if I have to go to the police I'm gonna say it was me so this definitely sent Nancy off. So then we get a scene with Donald and Lily. There is a lot of tension in the room between those two. And Lily says she has to go um, do um, pick out some clothes for the first lady. Um, and all of a sudden she starts saying that, yeah, because according to you, I'm nothing but some stupid Watts girl, you know. And here it is, you're supposed to think I'm just supposed to go on with my life knowing I shot somebody and you won't tell me anything. So she's like, why don't you just tell me what happened to him? And Richard tells this damn lie, you know, that um, he's not dead, which was true. But then he said that we sent him to Cuba. Yeah, we're not going to kill him, but he's going to be in jail for the rest of his life. Now, that would have worked if Bobby's ass wasn't just in that house just moments ago. Where as soon as you left the damn room, Bobby was there. And then she's like, do you know if he would, um, do you know if they, if somebody sent him after me? And he's like, well, I don't know anything and blah, 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 like, and all this stuff. And Lily is not here for the shit. She was getting on my nerves in this scene. But then again, I understood. She knows Donald's lying to her and that he's not being fully truthful. And in this episode, we get Donald's tea. So let's keep it moving. So we had that go on. Then we get a scene with Victoria and Priscilla. Victoria's being a mean bitch. You know, Priscilla's being doing her job because she's a head chef. Asks um, Victoria, does she need anything? She's like, if I wanted something, I would have buzzed for it. So now Priscilla's saying, this is where Gail gets that shit from. She's just as rude and just as disrespectful as her mother. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, Victoria's like, what is, what is the deal with you people? Being all so polite. What are you, robots? You know, it's so damn fake. And Priscilla was like, ma'am, we're not fake. We just love what we do here. And we honor our positions here. And then she's like, girl, just get out of my face with your fake ass smile. I'm like, Priscilla is good. Shout out to Taja Simpson, who plays the role. She be doing some damn good acting because Priscilla be keeping a straight face. She don't break. But yeah, Priscilla look like she'll give you the business if you call her outside of those walls. Yeah, but Priscilla ain't gonna let you break her. And she's now seeing this is where Gail gets that nastiness from. She gets it from her mother. And then um, Victoria asked her, well, what's going, what happened? Why was the staff changed yesterday? You know, why was that? And she says that when we have a, a, um, a sensitive situation in the White House, we usually have the senior staff in here to make sure everything goes smoothly. You know, and she's like, oh, so you guys saw us, huh? You saw us fighting, you know? And she was like, look, we are not going to speak about anything. That's why the senior staff is here, because we know the ropes and we know not to let nothing out. Um, but... She encourages Victoria, it will be wise for you to keep a united fight front in front of the staff. And then that's when Pris Victoria started being pleasant with her. She's like, okay, I will take that coffee because I don't even know how to work the machine. I'm like, yeah, bitch, you, you was doing too damn much, as always, Victoria, because she's over the top. And then um, while she's about to get her the coffee... Um, one of the aides comes in and tells Victoria that your father's online too, and he wants to speak with you and the president. So we literally see that Victoria immediately turned into this scared little girl. So I was like, hmm, what's the deal between Victoria and her daddy? But um, she went to the room, Hunter comes in, and both her and Hunter was talking shit to each other. 
And then all of a sudden, you know, they get into the room and they talk to the father. The father's on speakerphone and they he um he asks them how they're doing and then he immediately goes for Hunter. It's like, Hunter, it's eight AM. What the hell are you still doing there? Don't you need to be at the um at the um Capitol handling your business? And he's like, Do I have to show up there to get you two in line? And they was like, No, sir, no, sir. I was like, he literally talked to them like they were children. Um and he's like, and all of a sudden he said, oh, yeah, and I know about the problem with your daughter. What a terrible end. And I was like, wow. So after afterwards, you know, after they got off the phone with um, Victoria's dad, Victoria and Hunter go back and forth. And, and Victoria is stressing, look, this, you know, we need to keep a united front while we're here. And Hunter's like, why do I care about that? I hate you, bitch. And she's like, and I hate you too, bitch. I was like, damn, the two of them. But she, then she said that, look, we just got to survive here for four years and we can make millions. And pretty much, you know, Hunter's like, I don't even, I don't even think it's even worth that money. And she's like, of course it is. And then he goes to say that I did four years with you in the mayor's mansion. I did eight years with you in the governor's mansion. And now this? Like, like, when is it going to be enough? And then Victoria's like, honey, you're at the top of everything now. You know, you're at the pinnacle. You know, and if you just learn to keep your two inches in your pants, we both will come out of this greatly. You know, and remember... I'm the one that put your ass in here, and they want return on their investment. So I'm like, so it seemed to me that Daddy had a hand in helping them to get into the White House. But the thing is, what the hell is Daddy up to? So she was saying that, look, we just need to up a united front. You know, it's it'll be good practice for TV. I'm like, this damn fucking Victoria is shallow as hell. She's shallow and she's broken. So even though... The shit she does is entertaining, yet she's a tragic figure at the same time. So, then she tells him, oh yes, and while you're at it, you need to go check on your daughter, or do your small penis still got small business to take care of? And he's like, oh shit, the only thing my penis is doing is trying to run away from you. I'm like, Dante gives no fucks. At all. Then back at um at the um Halston's house... Barry finally wakes up. He has a nightmare about Callie. And he was like, she was so real. I have to find her. I have to find her. And Sharon is trying to, um, you know, keep him calm. You know, and he's like, I left her doll in the car. He goes outside. The car is gone because, you know, Richard took it. And here it goes. That damn, that damn uh, Barry starts flying off the handles again. It was like, oh my God, I got to get my car back. I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. And Sharon's like, you can't call the police. He's like, why not? My car's been... She's like, because Kareem pressed charges on you. And he's like, really? I don't care about that shit. I just want my car back. Blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, he's like, she's like, no, you just need to wait a minute. He's like, I can't wait. I'm not going to wait. Her doll is in the car. I want to get my car back. I'm calling the police. And Nancy was like, stop it. You're not calling the police. And I need, and then she tells Sharon, I need to talk to my son alone. And then, uh, you know, Sharon was like, yeah, because I got to get ready. And all of a sudden, Barry starts his bullshit again. It was like, oh, you, this dude pressing charges on me. You going to go to work? Really? That's what you going to do? And that was, and they start going back and forth. And all of a sudden, Nancy was like, shut up. Sharon, go get ready. And as soon as Sharon left. Nancy got another gold star for me because she slapped his ass again. Just what? I was like, yes! Because Barry be doing too much. He does entirely too much. And all of a sudden, he's like, damn, Mom, what the hell? She said that, here it is. You done got a damn gun from your cousin, done created all this havoc, you know, and now your father is literally going to sacrifice himself to save you. Like, I, you're, like, you're my son, but I don't even know who the hell you are anymore. Like, what is really going on? So they kind of go back and forth and everything. And then Richard comes in and tells him, you know, you need to um, get dressed. We got to go to the police and tell them what happened. 
And he was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And he and he um, told him that, look, I'll fill you in on the way, but get dressed. We got to go talk to the police. And then all of a sudden, Nancy was like, Lord, help us. I'm like, yeah, you need God. You need the angels. You need the whole apparatus of heaven to help you out through this because it's a whole bunch of crap going on. Then we get back to the um, to the Oval. Donald and Hunter are talking. Donald is rebriefing Hunter, and Hunter is literally paying no attention to Donald. Donald go flip out and cuss Hunter out eventually. I'm just waiting for that moment to happen because it's like he didn't give he didn't even care. So all of a sudden he's trying to um Donald's letting letting Hunter know that we got a full schedule today. And he was like, and also Hunter's like, where's the new guy? You know, he's like, excuse me? He's like, the new guy, because Max is at the door. Where's the new guy? He's like, you mean Kyle? He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, he's like, why is he not here? He says, well, I didn't get a chance to alert the staff. But meantime, he's like, no, do it now. I want him now. Oh, uh, Hunter lets um, Donald know, set up a meeting with all of the cabinet, with, 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 all, with the whole staff, because we need to speak to them, you know, the United Front. And then, and then, um, Donald hands, um, Donald, Hun Donald hands Hunter the list of the cabinet members that Victoria's dad once, once on the, um, you know, once in the cabinet. Like, it's a list that her father created with a list of names that he wants for the cabinet. Oh, tell me why the fuck Hunter just literally picked up the sheet and started ripping the shit up. Like, Hunter doesn't give a damn about this shit. It seems that Victoria wants this, wants the pinnacle more than he does. All Hunter want to do is screw Denise and not give a damn about anything. So then we see that, you know, Donald, you know, pulls Max to the side and lets him know, like, you know, due to the fact of the situation with the first daughter, they have made some changes. And as soon as he's about to tell him, Cal shows up. And I'm like, Cal, you evil bitch. And then we can see in, the, in uh, Max's face, he's pissed. Because he knows that Kyle did some snaky shit to try to take his position. And then, also get a scene with Jason and Priscilla, you know, and she was saying that, and he tells her that, do you know that my sister threw herself out of a moving car and that she hates my mother? And then he asks Priscilla, do you have kids? Because we're saying that Priscilla is someone connecting with Gail and, um, and Jason because she sees that these kids are broken. You know, so there's some level of compassion she's starting to have. And she was talking to Jason, and she tells Jason that, you know, we've been trying, but we haven't been successful. But I want two kids, like a boy and a girl, like like your parents. And he was and he was like, don't be like my parents. And, he, and, he, and she was like, don't say that. And he's like, I'm serious. They have the whole world fooled. So then we see that um, Victoria's talking to the nurse you know, the doctor, and she says that um, Gail has no broken bones, she only has scrapes and bruises, and um, and, uh, and um, the doctor's name is Pam, and she says that, oh yes, and I also gave her some pain meds, and then Victoria's like, oh no, she gets no pain meds whatsoever, and she's like, but they're very low dose, they're not even addictive, she's like, it doesn't matter, don't give her anything, and I'm like, Victoria, you are so fucking evil, bitch, damn, like, the girl is in serious fucking pain, and you just gonna let her deal with pain. So, then we see that um, that Jason goes in, the, goes in the room with Gail, and he's like, you, I can't believe you actually jumped out of the car. And then Jason was like, let me see your bruises. And she's like, you damn pervert, get the hell out of here. And then, so she's pretty much asking, you know, where's dad or whatever, because she does have some of the kinship with her father. And then all of a sudden, Victoria's like, your father doesn't give a damn about you. And she tells Jason to leave. And then she's like, what the hell do you want? And she's like, honey, how are you feeling? Are you in pain? And she's like, what the hell do you think? And she's like, well, you said you were in pain. So now I'm going to show you what real pain is. And then she um, gave her back her phone. And she's like, how did you get this? She was like, play the video. And she's like, what the hell is going on? She said, play the video. She plays the video and it's a video of, you know, Kyle and the um, Secret Service literally going after all the thugs, you know, and 
And pretty much she also had her meds and was like, she ain't get, she she pretty much told her that, um, no, you said you're in pain, so I'm want you, I want you to actually experience what pain really feels like. So then um she she had asked she is she knows that the that the guys they round up were Picky's friends and she asks about Picky, like, is he dead? And she was like, Yes, he is. I'm so sorry. I'm like this evil bitch. And we definitely see that <coughs> Gail feels some kind of way because she was in love with Picky. But then again, we don't really have the full confirmation that Picky's dead. We saw the gun go off on the last episode, but we don't know if Picky if Picky was able to get away from Cal or not. At, back at the um the Oval, Donald decides to have a meeting with Kyle because when Cal walked up when he was talking to Max, he had told he had told Kyle to go in his office. He'll talk to him there. And then he pretty much let Max know that, yeah, you know, things have changed, you know, so he's not going to be on the president's detail anymore. So all of a sudden we see um, Donald and Kyle go back and forth and Donald asks him, what the hell did you tell the president? And he was like, He's like, I, I, I just said that, you know, Max is not really up to our standards as far as security and all of that. And he was like, who are you working for, Kyle? And then all of a sudden he says, all of a sudden he pulls out a phone. He says, so he pretty much um, pulls out a phone and press it and tell him to press play. Kyle, and he pretty much read Kyle for filth. He was like, you took Jason to see the staff headquarters which gave him the idea of how to sneak Gail out of the White House. So, really, it's his fault that that she got let out the White House, but yet he's putting the blame on Max. Max was on duty at the you know at the behest of Hunter's old hoish ass. You know, he was watching the you know keeping keeping watch for him and Denise. That's why Max wasn't there. But, and then he was like, you know what, Kyle? You're very good at your job, but you are a damn snake, and I'm going to be watching you. And he's like, good. And, and Donna was like, excuse me? He's like, I love it when you watch me. And he's like, do you want your job, Kyle? And Kyle was like, I want you. And I was like, see, this is where this shit is happening. Now it's coming out. And he pretty much tells um, Kyle to get out of his office. He's like, look. I know I hurt you. I know why you broke up with me, but you have to I have to admit I was drunk and he and the guy meant nothing to me, you know. And then he starts getting on his knees and all of that. And then he said then then he starts saying that, you know, I knew I hurt you, but I didn't think you was going to go through links and marry that bitch. And I he was like, "Get the hell out of here." So we all know this is why this whole thing was set up of why Bobby was on um why Bobby was on Lily's tail, you know, because we know Kyle was the one that hired Bobby. He wants to find something to take down Lily so he can get back into into um Donald's life. And he's maneuvered and did all of this shit to get close to him. And now that he's on the president's detail, that means every time, you know, the president's around, Kyle will be right there. He'll be right there with Donald and shit. And he starts trying to, you know, get close to him and shit. He's like, get out of here. Get out of here. And he was, and all of a sudden, um, Kyle with his old, you know, slutty ass was like, I can see it. And then he hit behind the chair. I'm like, mm-hmm. So now we know your T, Donald. Yeah, you married Lily. You know, Lily is your beard. And you and Kyle were in this physical relationship, an actual relationship. But because Kyle cheated on you, you broke up with him. But now, but Kyle is not going to take no lying down. And then once Kyle leaves the office, he just has this sinister ass laugh. I'm like, this bitch is evil. Then they actually, we actually have the staff meeting. They bring the whole staff together. You know, Kyle whispers to um, one of the um, other SS guys named Perkins, like, thanks for your help. And then he looks to Max like, hi, Max. And Max was like, go to hell. Like... I know what the fuck you did, and I know how you move. Like, get the fuck out of here. Don't talk to me. So then, um, Donald pretty much, you know, addresses them, and and then all of a sudden, he was like, you know, I'm glad you all are here, and all of a sudden, Kyle was like, oh yeah, we wouldn't miss it for anything. We're here for you, sir. 
I was like, Kyle is one sick bitch. And then Victoria and Hunter go in there with the United Front and everything. Um, and you can just look in Sam's face and everybody's face. They know these motherfuckers are lying. But, they're, but you know, they obviously took Priscilla's advice and said that you guys need to keep a United Front amongst the staff. And then all of a sudden they ask, do you guys, do you guys have any questions? And then all of a sudden Priscilla says something. And I was like, mm-hmm. Priscilla was like, uh, well, the thing is, our staff would be better run if we actually had Richard Halson back on the staff. And immediately Donald's like, look, I already said, he's like, oh, no, 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 we got this. You know, because I'm like, Donald, your ass should have been had his ass back up in there because you know the guy was innocent. But then again, I think Donald has this superiority complex when it comes down to other black people who work, as I said, service jobs. You know, he looks down on them. And pretty much she was saying that, look, you know, he's very favorable here with the staff and we want to know if, we, if you guys will hire him back. And they and I, Hunter asked, do all of you are in favor with Richard? They all nodded their heads. And they was like, okay, well, we'll hire him back. And then as soon as everybody left, she's like, Victoria looked at Hunter was like, let go of my damn hand. He's like, well, I just want to squeeze it a little bit more just to see, just to, just to get the pain. Like... They really hate each other like shit. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, Donald's like, okay, I need, we need to, um, I need to, we need to talk. And he was like, okay, fine, we can talk once, once, once the Wicked Witch of the West Wing leaves. And then as soon as you leave, he's like, bye. <laughs> like, they are running that, running that to the hill with that one. So then we get the fucking showdown of this episode. Richard and Nancy are back at home. He finally talks to the girl from the Rakadushis. We find out her name is Tally. And she admits to helping to helping the other Rakadushis along with Ruth kidnap Callie. And she says that they will kill me. You know, you know, the highest. Like he will kill me. He's like, if you leave, they kill you. You know. She's like, I'm already dead. And he's, and um, she shows him a picture of her daughter, whose name is Tavia. And she says on there is a list of, list of the places that they've been. But you got you to gotta act fast because they, um, you know, because, you know, they move around a lot. And then she asks, do you have a cell phone? Could you record me? She literally records like a last will and testament video saying that um, she states her name, states her daughter's name. And she says that. You know, in response to my death, I ask that um, that the whole sins will get custody of my daughters. You know, and she and like Richard was like, no, 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 no. You don't have. You're not gonna die. Everything's gonna be okay. We're gonna fix this. You know, everything's gonna be fine. And she was like, you don't understand. They they're gonna kill me. They they are not gonna stop until I'm dead. You know, and. And then he was like, look, I know people. We can get this taken care of. And she's like, it's it's not going to matter. They're going to kill me. And then she tells Nancy, Nancy, thank you for taking me in. The food you made was good. And I'm sorry you're going to have to clean this mess. And she puts the gun in her mouth and blows her brains out. I was like, oh, shit. Now there's going to be more fucking problems at their doorstep. And I'm like, wow, this is going to be crazy. So next week is the mid-season finale. I can't wait to see what happens next. But this episode was so fucking good. And I was so here for it. I was like, wow. So now they got a dead woman in the house. You know, Barry got that whole situation with the um with the um you know with the guy that you know got killed by the bullet that he shot because Barry was the one who shot the gun. And then, like, it's just so much happening. I'm like, I can't wait to see how this midseason finale is going to play out. But they say that somebody's going to die. So we just got to keep watching and see who will. Um, who will be dead by the end of, of the season finale next week. So get down in those comments and let me know your thoughts of this episode. If I missed anything, get down in those comments let me know your thoughts. So until next time, everybody, take care.